heads and come to your throne of grace. In the mighty and matchless name, the sweet name of Jesus the Christ. And God, we thank you for this privilege of being able to hear your word, to study your word, and to know that you are God and there is none like you. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the blessing of being called Christian. Even in these days where the governments have, and some of, gov some of the government leaders have considered that your church is not essential. God, we know, Lord, that you said by your, your own words that you will build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so, God, while they, 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 they close the, the, the church physical doors, we thank you that you have given us the opportunity to, to, to study your word, to fellowship, even, even through the, um, the different electronic devices, the technological devices that have been made so that we can still be in contact, that we can still communicate, and we can still fellowship one with another. God, we thank you. And Lord, as we are um, uh, petitioning you, we, we ask a special blessing upon our brother, uh, who is the chairman of our trustee ministry. God, we pray, Lord, that you will bless him. We know, Lord, that he is going through, that he is, is, is walking through the valley of the shadow of death. God, we pray, Lord, that you would raise him up, that you would give him restoration, that you would give him newness of life, that you would, you would, you would cause him to, to call out unto you, and that he would hear your voice, and that, that just as you healed uh, Moses' hand when he, when he stuck his hand inside and it came out leprous, leprous, you told him to stick it back in and it came out healed just as it was, just as it was before. So God, we pray, Lord, that you will bless him. And not just him, Lord, but we pray, Lord, for all of the sick and shunned, those that are troubled in mind, troubled in body, troubled in spirit. God, we ask, Lord, that you would have mercy. And God, we know, Lord, that we don't always know what we should pray for as we are. But God, we know, Lord, that this world is in serious trouble. We know that, it's, it's, that we're living in the last days. And all of these things that are happening, you already foretold us through your word. And so we ask God that you would help us to, to stay focused, to keep watching, and to stay prayerful, and to, and to stay steadfast in the assignment that you have given us. We ask God that you will bless our church family, those that are moving on up in age, Pray, Lord, that you will bless our children. We keep hearing about all kinds of viruses and diseases that are affecting uh, men, women, boys, and girls, black, white, Hispanic, uh, Asians. God, we ask, Lord, that you would have your way and that, you, 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 that your will might be done in this earth. And so, Lord, as we close this prayer, we thank you, Lord, for being our God. And we thank you for supplying all of our needs. We don't always get what we want. And God, I'm glad we don't get what we want because sometimes the things that we want are not good for us. But we thank you that you know what we need and that you're able to provide all that we need. No matter what it is, God, we know, Lord, that you can provide all that we need. And so we thank you. Now, Lord, as we close this prayer, acknowledge you, we acknowledge the love that you have for us, how you have suffered long watching us and waiting on us. So God, we thank you. We praise you, we magnify you, we glorify you, we honor you with our lives. This we pray in the great and mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
Christian faith. I want to welcome you to our uh, YouTube broadcast coming from the Second Baptist Church here in the Great Borough of Bristol, Pennsylvania. 640 Ray Street is our address and our website, our webpage is located by um, tuning in to www.sbc640.org. And uh, we want to uh, thank all of those who have um, participated and contributed to the um, advancement of the ministry here at the church. I want to just take a moment to acknowledge um, so many of you who are continuing to provide the kind of tithes and offerings that keep um, our bills being paid and, and, and things that we need to do in order to sustain the Second Baptist Church here in Bristol. I want to thank the listening audience for tuning in. And um, also, I want you to bear in mind that the date is coming up very, very quickly. If you want to vote on uh, June the 2nd, if you want your vote counted, you've got to either, you have to have already been registered now, and if you are going to try and mail in your vote, you need to mail it in and get that application by the 26th of this month, and that's not too many days away. And so remember, it's very, very important. So I want to um, commend you on, on your, your um, uh, attendance during our Zoom uh, Bible studies and Bible fellowship. I thank you for tuning in, and, and I want you to know that I enjoy the fellowship. We've had some uh, wonderful times studying God's word and, and talking about the various things that, that impact our lives that we can learn from through the study of God's word. And so today's message, really, um, I'd like to uh, title it, The Call, The uh, Commission, and The Consolation. Let, let me say that again. The title of today's message is, is The Call, The Commission, and The Consolation. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I'd like to use a passage of scripture found in the Old Testament. And it's found in the Old Testament. The, 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 the scripture that I'd like to use is found in Exodus chapter number 4. And I'd like to just make reference to one verse, and it is verse number 13. And here's what it says. It says, and he said, O my Lord, sin, I pray thee, by the hand of him who thou wilt send. In other words, uh, Moses is our speaker right here in this particular verse, and he is talking to Jehovah God. And he's asking God to send somebody else, don't send him. And so um, I'd like now for you to just bow with me um, for a word of prayer. We want to ask God's blessing upon the message. Let us look to the Lord. Gracious and all wise God, our Father, we thank you for this privilege. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to proclaim your word. And we know, Lord, that your word is settled. Your word is absolutely true. And so, God, we ask that you would use this body of clay that you made. That we pray, Lord, that you would use it in such a way where your word would go forth and find a resting place in someone's heart and someone's soul. That it might take root and grow and produce an increase. That the person might be edified and, and, and encouraged. And most of all, that you would be glorified. So, God, we thank you for it. We, we pause even for a moment to to reflect and confess that we know, Lord, that we have sinned and offended you by some of the things that we've said, done, and thought about. And so, God, we ask your forgiveness, and we recognize and realize that, God, you are the forgiving God. You're faithful to forgive us. And so we thank you, Lord. And now, God, we just ask that you would use this body of clay, that you would speak through it, speak to me as we proceed in your word. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. The call, the commission, and the consolation. Um, th th there are three things that, that we, we enjoy in life. 
probably many, many more than just three things, but one of the things that we, we enjoy is recreation. And, um, uh, you know, God does have a sense of humor because um, not only does he engage us and allow us to have time to recreate, uh, he also allows us to, to have a job, to work, you know, and to work for him. And, and the third thing that he allows us to do is to get rest, to get some sleep, because rest, we need rest. Matter of fact, this COVID-19 stay-at-home order has caused many of us to get some of the much-needed rest that we needed, because some of us are workaholics. And, but, but part of the problem with being a workaholic is that you're working for the wrong person, you see. And most of the time, we're working for ourselves. So, so, so God has, has, has encouraged us to, to have a little fun. And, and God does have a sense of humor. And, and part of it is reflected in this particular word, where we see Moses, who um, is one of the main actors aside from God, who is the main actor in all of our um, in, um, endeavors. God is the main actor. Okay, so let me give an introduction because this is a series that's probably going to take um, several uh, weeks, several sermons in order to, to, to complete it. Well, uh, I did have another title for this. Uh, but 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 I want to stay true to the actual title, which is the call, the commission, and the consolation. Um, and as I was preparing for this message, um, I, I really was was not toying with the with the uh, title, but I was grappling with the title. When God calls you, don't test Him. I grappled with that. But then I also grappled with, when God calls, just do it. And so it has to do with the call of Moses. Now, when Moses was born, he was actually born in Egypt. And initially he was nurtured by his mother and escaped the Pharaoh's order of being put to death as an infant. He was an infant. At a very early age, and to avoid Pharaoh's attempt to destroy all newborn male infants, Moses was hid in a small ark that drifted in the Nile River. However, miraculously, the infant child Moses was removed from the ark by an Egyptian woman and, and given to Pharaoh's daughter to raise. As a result, Moses remained in Egypt and grew up until an incident caused him to flee from Egypt. And the reason he had to flee from Egypt was because of a fight that ended in the death of an Egyptian man that he killed. And so, leaving Egypt, Moses traveled to a place called Midian, which is right outside of Egypt. There he found refuge and met and married a woman by the name Zipporah, who was the daughter of Jethro. Jethro was a priest of Midian. Moses and Zipporah had a son, and they named him Gershom. Moses actually remained there in each, uh, in uh, Midian for a, a, a 40 year period. So, so, so by the time that we, we, we find Moses here at this place called um, Mount, um, uh, Mount Horeb, by the time we find Moses here at Mount Horeb, he was a shepherd. And, and, and he was leading Jeff. Jethro's flock to this unsuspecting place at Mount Horeb. And so while attending to the flock, the call of God came to Moses. The call of God came to Moses. And, and, and see, 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 God's call involves his selection 
of particular people that he chooses to be enlisted in his army to serve for a divine purpose. God's call is to serve for a divine purpose. Now, now I want you to understand that, that no man can come to the Lord Jesus Christ except he be drawn by the Father. And so, understand, God drew Moses to the burning bush. A amen. But, but before we get to, to, to the burning bush, um, let me just say that God knows exactly how to train us. And, and, and he also knows exactly what we need to be prepared for service. We need to understand that, that Moses spent the first 40 years of his life growing up in Egypt under Pharaoh. And then after the incident that caused him to flee Egypt, he spent an additional 40 years on, on, on the backside of Mount Horeb attending Joseph, or, um, strike that, attending Jethro's flock of sheep. And so while shepherding Jethro's flock, Moses saw a bush that was burning. But the bush was not consumed by the fire, nor was the bush damaged by the fire. Amazingly, God spoke from the midst of the burning bush and called Moses by name. And, and, and not only did he call him by name, but he informed him uh, that he had to, to take off his shoes. Amen. And, and he told Moses, he said, Moses, Moses, draw not nigh hither, because the place where you are standing is holy ground. God went on to reveal to Moses um, and, and said that, that, that he was the God of Abraham, that he was the God of Isaac, and that he was the God of Jacob. And then he said to Moses, he says, I saw how they were being oppressed and afflicted down there in Egypt land. God told Moses that he heard their cry, and that he knew of their sorrow, and that he came to provide for their deliverance from bondage. And there you find that in chapter number 3. In, in Exodus chapter 3 is the beginning of, of, of uh, this whole uh, uh, calling of Moses. When God calls you and gives you an assignment, it's not uncommon for God's people to balk. It's not uncommon for, for God's people to resist, even when God himself calls you, it's not uncommon for God's people to be reluctant to accept the call. A amen, somebody. You see, when God calls you, uh, you, you, you know, oftentimes we have all of these complaints and excuses that we use as to why we don't really want to do what God has called us to do. As a matter of fact, most people pause with doubt and hesitancy and will question a variety of things about the call. A amen, somebody. They'll, they'll, they'll question why they were selected. Amen. And then they'll ask for some proof. They'll also question their own ability to carry out the assignment. They'll express feelings of inadequacy. They'll express feelings of, of how they, they don't agree with what it is that God is calling them to do. They'll, they'll express feelings of unwillingness. And some are bold enough and will ask, how will they benefit? In other words, they'll say, what's in it for me? Others voice reluctance about the commitment because of the dangers and the fears that are involved in doing what God has called them to do. You see, some are scared they might have to endure some pain. And then some pause because they feel they won't be believed. 
they know that, 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 that people tend to accuse you of being a hypocrite and a liar, especially when it's about things that they don't understand. Amen, somebody. People will come up with all kinds of excuses to keep from serving and making commitments. Anyway, after the call comes the commission. God called Moses, and Moses was pretty clear that it was God who had called him. And so when God commissioned Moses, he was informed that he was to be sent as God's representative back down to Egypt. God also assured him in the text that he would be with him and that he would provide all that he needed. Anyway, with the commission came a whole host of issues that Moses had to settle within himself. Unconvinced and uncommitted, Moses was also authorized by God to perform a specific assignment that would require a period of time that could also be extended. We don't know how long it's going to take us to do what God has called us to do. And sometimes it might take a lifetime. Sometimes God would call you into a, 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 a responsibility, give you an assignment that, that you'll have to continue for the balance of your life. Amen, deacon. Amen, preachers. Amen, pastors. Amen, somebody. You see, in the text of verses 13, 14, and 15, Moses expressed concern about his own people not being able to accept the truthfulness of his calling and commission. He also expressed concern about the people wanting to know God's name. Because Moses raised a question and said, uh, who shall I say sent me? And, and, and they want to ask, what is his name? Well, there in verses 14 and 15, God revealed his name and told Moses to say, I am that I am. In other words, God said to tell them, I am have sent me unto you, meaning that he's self-existent. He's a self-existent eternal God. Uh, in the text, in the Hebrew text, uh, there is what's called a tetragrammaton, and the tetragrammaton is the uh, consonants Y-H-W-H, -H, which has been translated to the name Jehovah. Amen. It also means I exist to be whatever, wherever, however, and with whomever I exist. And let me say that again. You see, this tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H, is been translated and, and, and to the name Jehovah. And, and, and when, we, when we refer to Jehovah, the, the name Jehovah means he is self-existent and eternal. There are all kind of other uh, attributes that only God possesses that also is intertwined in this name, self-existent, eternal God, Jehovah. Well, well, you know, we, 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 we don't have time to really delve into all of that. However, God revealed to him that his name would be a token and a memorial unto all generations. Amen? When God commissions us, we need to have confidence and we need to, to, to take courage to know that he will also provide whatever is needed to face the opposition and to validate the message and the messenger. Now, 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 let's turn now to chapter number four, beginning at the first verse. It starts out with Moses expressing concern about not being believed. See, the people did not want to believe that God had appeared to Moses and that God had sent him. So, so
so, so Moses was instructed to go back to Egypt to let God's people know that God had visited them and that he was to speak truth to power. Moses had to go back to Egypt and stand before the mighty Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh that the Lord said, Thus saith Jehovah, let my people go, that we might go to the wilderness and make sacrifices. But, 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 but God told Moses that Pharaoh was not going to let his people go. Now, now because they would have trouble believing him, now this is the, the children of Israel, the children of Israel were going to have trouble believing Moses. And so, so since that was the case, Moses was given some proof that he was to use in order to convince those doubters. Amen. God instructed Moses to take the staff, to take the rod. It was a big stick that he had. To take the rod he held in his hand and throw it down. Well, obviously, you know a little bit about the story. Instantly, when Moses threw that rod to the ground, the rod was transformed into a serpent. And then Moses was instructed to pick the serpent up by the tail, not by the head, but to pick it up by the tail. In other words, there are some commentators that say that, that he was to pick it up by the tail in order to let uh, Pharaoh know that he had him by the tail. A amen, somebody. You see, he didn't have him by the head. He had him by the tail. And, and, and usually when you pick up a snake, you pick up the snake by the head. But, but, but Moses was obedient. And we need to understand that obedience yields blessings. Obedience yields God's favor. See, see God showed Moses that he not only has power and authority to make an inanimate object alive, he showed Moses that, that obedience yields his favor. You see, God instructed Moses uh, to, to, to pick up the serpent by the tail. And when he picked up the serpent by the tail, the serpent then transformed back to its original state, which was a stick, the rod, the staff. Then God instructed Moses to place his hand in his bosom and, 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 and to pull it out. When, 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 when immediately when Moses pulled his hand out of his bosom, his, his hand was, had turned leprous, leprosy. His hand had turned and became leper, leprous. Then he was instructed to place his hand back into his bosom and to pull it out again. When he did it, his hand was immediately healed. And, 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 it, and it was as healthy as it was before. Amen. So, so, so by doing this, God showed Moses something else. God showed Moses that he has power to make something that's healthy and well instantly sick and diseased. But again, Moses was instructed to place the affected hand back into his bosom. And he pulled it out again, and obviously, he was healed. And so by doing this, God showed Moses that he has power to restore wellness to some of the most dreaded diseases in a moment of time. He can do it instantly. A amen, somebody. So, so finally, God instructed Moses to draw some water from the Nile River when he got to Egypt. And he told him, he said, look, pour it out on the ground. And when he did, he said that the water would become blood. See, this last miracle was to prove for Moses and the people that God has power even over microscopic elements and can change them at will anytime he chooses. After all, after all that, Moses offered one last excuse and complained about his inability to speak eloquently. 
Moses complained that he was slow of speech and that he had a slow tongue. But God answered his complaint just as effectively as he answered all the others. You see, none of us are what we should be. All of us have character flaws. All of us have some kind of personality fault that causes us to fail at various times in life. But brothers and sisters of the Christian faith, there is consolation in serving the true and living God. Yes, there is someone greater than Moses that did for us more than we could ever do for ourselves. Jesus is his name. And the fact that and, and the fact is that Jesus is real. And not only did he do for us great and magnificent things, he's still doing things right now while seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. And he's able to do more for us than we're able to ask or think. And so, and so here, here, before I take my seat, while we tend to fumble God's blessings and falter along life's journey, he's faithful and just to bless us even in our mess. Even in the mess that we find ourselves in today, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we are able to ask or think. Amen, somebody. God saved us. Yes. Amen. God provides for us. Yes. Amen. God protects us. Yes. Amen. God also strengthens us. Yes, amen. God comforts us. Yes, amen. God also teaches us. Yes, amen. And he enables us. Yes, amen. He also leads us into the valley of the shadow of death. And when we get there, we'll fear no evil. Yes, amen. And God also instructs us and speaks to us and empowers us and directs us, and he'll help us. I look into the hills, the psalmist said, from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And last but not least, God loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe him would not perish. Anyway, now, since all these things are true, why then, why is it that we have so much trouble trusting God? Amen. Why do we have so much trouble fulfilling his word in us? Especially when he desires for us to do what he's called us to do. What I discovered is that it is a simple matter of trusting God. Most senior saints have been brought up with the proverb that teaches us to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we are to acknowledge him. And when we acknowledge God, he will direct our paths. I'd like to close with this, with this statement. I discovered, what I discovered studying this particular text is that our individual lifestyle practices are the signs that God desires to use as evidence that he is present in our lives. So listen, if God has called you, and he has, because if God didn't call you, the likelihood is that you wouldn't be tuned in right now. So God has called you, and God has also commissioned you, and God has also given you consolation. Yes, he is. The blood of Jesus, when Jesus...
Jesus was marched up there on Calvary. When they stretched him wide and when they stretched him high and when they jammed the crown of thorns on his, on his head, he cried out and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But the final statement that he made from the cross was that he said, Father, into thine hands I commend my spirit. And Jesus died. But I'm so glad, brothers and sisters, that when Jesus died, after they took him down off the cross and, and did what they normally would do for a person that has died, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus took his body, wrapped it up, and took him to a borrowed tomb and placed him in there on Friday evening. And Saturday, all day long, not a mumbling word was spoken. But early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene and some of the other ladies made their way to the tomb where Jesus, Mary's baby, who had grown up and had performed miracles along the wayside, had been baptized in the River Jordan, was brought up in Nazareth and preached and made the blind see and made the dead come alive again, healed the lepers, the same Jesus, raised from the dead. And now he is seated at the right hand of God. And he's making intercession for us right now. And he said before he went, he said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Yes, Paul said it, but Paul said it because he was, he was being used by the almighty God. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. And so if you have been called, and I believe you have, you have a commission. And, and, and I encourage you to, to, to do what God has called you to do. Serve when God calls you to serve. There should be no excuses that we give that would, 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 would uh, prevent us from doing what it is that God has called us to do. Every born again baptized believer in the Lord Jesus Christ have been called to serve. Even in this time of confusion and even in this time of, of, of fear of getting some kind of sickness. Because the Bible also declares that if this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building of God. A house that's not made with hands that's eternal in the heaven. And Jesus said it himself. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, he said, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. You know the verse. Thomas said, we don't know whither thou have gone. And we don't know the way. Jesus made it clear and plain. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And so with this, with that statement... I want to encourage you, if you've been called, serve. If you've been commissioned, don't make the excuses as to why you can't do what God has called you to do. Because there's great consolation in serving the true and living God. He's able. Oh, yes, he is. And see, consolation, here's what it means. See, see. The consolation is what God does to help us feel content. Consolation is what God does to, to help us to feel comforted and less sad and less insecure about the assignment that he has given to us. And include, it includes God's promises. And all of God's promises or yea and amen. And let me just tell you this before I sit down. God promises that there is a heaven. And he promises that there is a hell. And it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that the judgment. So I encourage you to be that witness that God has called you to be. Serve in whatever capacity. God has called you to serve in. And yes, 
Right now, we need some people to serve in the pantry. Yes, we have Tuesday covered, and we have Wednesday covered, but we need three people for Thursday. And I am surprised, I am very much surprised and disappointed that we did not get the kind of calls that we needed in order to get that service done for Thursday. And so if you're here, or if you're listening, and, 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 and God has knocked on your heart's door, call. Call me. Let me know that you're willing and that you're able to serve. And, and, and beloved, there is a place for you to serve, even in this time of chaos, confusion, and trouble. May God bless you. Real good.